All right, guys, GoBoy32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting in the home office, and I'm getting ready to do a review on this guy right here. This is Palmetto State Armory's premium upper receiver. Now, this guy comes without a bolt carrier group and a charging handle. I'm kind of glad it does because something of this nature, I really want an opportunity to pick out the cool things. Like in this particular one, we're going to go with a uh, BCM uh, chart. Uh, what do you call this thing? Bolt carrier group. And then, of course, the Radian Raptor charging handle, which is really cool. But I'm getting ready to do this thing, and I'm going over all the specifications and everything else that goes with it. And I was like, you know what? While we're doing this, I'm going to break out the bore scope. And for you guys, before you ask, I'll put a link down below to the Amazon store. This is by Teslong. This thing's $49.99. It is probably the best deal out there. But be forewarned, guys. Uh, if you put this thing down your barrel, you're going to see some things that you may or may not like. My little daughter's over here. So anyway, let's do this real quickly. This is an FN barrel. It's chrome lined. It's pretty cool. Uh, so let's take a look at it. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some other barrels. We've got another build that I'm going to be doing here in the near future. This is a Seekins Precision 1 and 8 twist, uh, 16 inch long. This is a match grade barrel. And this is Chrome Molly. Uh, you've got the, uh, what do you call it? Um, nitride finish. Then we've got a really cool deal here. This is uh, Strike Industries. This is their new one. This is Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line. So we'll be able to do a comparison with the Chrome Lining and this guy and this guy. I've not scoped this out. And just to give you a comparison, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor barrel from Palmetto State Armory that was sent to the channel. And I'm still trying to figure out a really cool idea for this guy. And then the cream of the crop, what we have here, this is a proof research. This is a one in seven twist. Kind of an interesting thing, a little bit outside of what I normally like is a one in eight twist. But we're figuring out how this could develop into a really, really badass DMR rifle. So let's go ahead and do this. I thought it'd be kind of cool. First thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to scope out the uh, FN barrel. Now the FN barrel is a one in seven twist. It is a mid-length gas system and this chrome line. We'll go ahead and get over here and hit the record button. And this is kind of a cool thing. You get to see it here, but we'll go ahead and feed that guy up in there. And what is that thing? That's kind of cool looking. Oh, that looks like a, uh, oh, there's your gas tube. Look at that. Well, I guess we should take a look at that. You can see the tooling marks on it. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and bring it up on in here. There's your locking lugs. Really nice. One of the things I did notice is that we're going to see some uh, deposits of some lubricants or some solvents and stuff like that. These rifles, these they are test fired for operation before they send them out there. So we're going to see maybe some carbon and some... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Copper buildup in here. But let's take a look at it. Now, the first thing I look at is at the beginnings of the lens. Now, this is this is huge right here. Look at how smooth that transition is because when your round is jumping, it's going to ramp up onto the lens right there. But look how clear and precise those things are. And that's one of the cool things that I absolutely love. You can tell the difference between this guy and one of your budget barrels. Of course, hey man, this PSA, this is a budget barrel too. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, I don't know if these are button pulled or cross cut, but uh, probably, no, they're cold hammer four, sorry. So anyway, we'll go ahead and move it up. You can see there's some copper deposits right there. Not a whole lot, but just enough. Let's go ahead and take it. One of the things I did actually take a look at this prior to, and I was interested in the crown on the end of the barrel. It's got a 20 degree crown. It's absolutely, big. look at those lands. What that does is it tells me that this is going to be a really, really good, uh, accurate barrel. Well, you know, you never know until you shoot the damn thing. So let's bring it on out here. God, it's long, 16 inches. You can see the crown, nice cuts. Let's take a look at the gas port. I'm going to bring this back up, aim it vertical. And she should be right about here. There you are. Very nice. Smooth transition. Very cool. 
All right, so that is an FN barrel that's never been fired. I thought, wait a minute, I have a 14 and a half inch that has been fired. Let me go back and get that, hold on. All right, so what we got here is another FN barrel. This guy is a one and seven, yep. And I have put several rounds through this thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what a chrome line barrel with several hundred rounds looks like. Hold on, there we go. Look at those lands. Let's go ahead and follow that up. You can see the carbon build up on it. The nice thing, you take that, uh, the bore tech and you put it in there and it'll get rid of all that for you. One of the guys asked me about how often I should clean the barrel. One of the things is about two or 300 rounds, I like to get the carbon out of it. I'm not worried about the copper. Uh, about five or 600 rounds. Once you start seeing uh, accuracy degradation, that's when you wanna go ahead and strip that barrel all the way out. You can see, look at this thing. falling around here. And this is a this barrel is another project that we have coming. We've got a TIG welder. Uh, I've got my power and everything hooked up for it. And we'll be uh, pin and welding here pretty soon. And that's pretty nice right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the gas port real quickly. Bring it in. Right about there. There it is. You can see a little bit going on. From the leading edge all right so you can see what's going on right there so that's two fn barrels both chrome line one with a several uh, five i would say probably 500 to 700 rounds through that barrel right there as it sits all right let's put that guy now here's what i want to look at this is the strike industries this is their cold hammer forged uh 16 no this is 14 and a half inch chrome lined supposedly so let's take a look at this thing this is a one and eight twist. Go ahead and put a vertical, take a look at it. Wow. Now all those bumps and stuff you're seeing, that's just grease and oil and hair. Ooh, nasty. But as we follow this thing down, if I were to run a brush, what in the hell? Now I'm gonna have to clean my mirror. <laughs> There's our gas hole. Nicely done. Some people have said to me that uh, you're not going to get as accurate of a group with the uh, gas port hole being on a land like that. You guys let me know what your thoughts are. We keep pushing it on through here. I just like how pronounced the lands are. Very nice. Goop. There we go. And there's... There's no crown cut. Well, yeah, there is. Okay, you can see it right there. There we go. That's a nice barrel. I'm looking forward to putting this build together. This is one of the reasons why I've got the TIG welder because we've got that new muzzle brake that you can put on here. You pin and weld it, and it's small enough that we can bring a gas block over top of it. So this should be interesting. Okay, let me clean my mirror. Okay, so next up, we're gonna take a look at a Seekins barrel. Now, this is going to go on another uh, tactical build that I have coming up with a Geisley handrail. Uh, handrail, handguard. Uh, I believe it's the Mark 8. But let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Now, this is a, uh, what do you call it? Nitride finish. So we're gonna take a look at this. And if you look at those lands, Look how different they are from a traditional. That's weird. It looks like there's, you can tell it's been drilled out and pulled, but look at that. Isn't that weird looking? It'll be interesting to see how the accuracy is going to be on this guy. So we can find that, go to the end. I don't know, man, I like that. That looks cool. Seekins makes some of the best barrels out there. Go ahead, there's your crown. Look at that. You know, this barrel has not been test fired at all. So this will, this will be one of those barrels that will actually go through a break-in process. A lot of people have different ideas about break-in. Uh, on a barrel that I'm spending any kind of money on and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the break-in process because 
That's just how I roll. All right, here we go. Boom. We'll run a brush through it, but you can see, look at the edges on that. So yeah, after we run a brush through it, uh, treat it, and I put denatured alcohol in the barrel. So what I want to do is I'm going to try to get all the grease dissolved and out of there, but I don't want to leave any oils behind. So when the round goes through, you're creating that superheated uh, metal and you just don't want anything in there that could bake into the steel. But look at that. Neat. All right, so we've done that one. Let's take a look at the uh, PSA barrel. This is the uh, 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor. Go ahead and take a look at this. And this came out of their little factory. And this guy's been sitting out in my shop. Now what'll happen is, is the carbon uh, content, you will, even though it's 416 stainless steel, there's, there's different levels of 416 that have different levels of carbon content. And if you have these things, but look at that beautiful land. If you have these things in an unconditioned space where you've got a lot of humidity, you're going to experience a little slight bit of rust in it, depending on. If you guys remember uh, the Ballistic Advantage barrel, uh, what probably happened is that thing set out in an open space, uh, unconditioned, and ex uh, probably exposed to a tremendous amount of humidity, and that's what will happen. But this is, this is the Palmetto State Army. This is made right there in Somerville, South Carolina. Uh, my buddy Mark, what an awesome guy. What an awesome operation they have down there, too. They turn out 2,000 barrels a day. Their QC pro program is amazing. Look at that guy. And I tell you what, for a button-pulled rifle, uh, that is a good... Look, there's a little bit of a pocket right there. No big deal. Man. Look at that, though. Let's see what the crown looks like. Nicely cut. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and pull that back. We'll take a look at the gas port. Man, that's fugly looking, but there's nothing wrong with that. You can see something's been run through here, cleaned. But you can tell right there I don't know if that's something that's in the steel or if that's some kind of chemical. Uh, not bad. And that's half cut into it, but look at the lands all the way around. I'm really looking forward to it. I do have an upper receiver ready to go. I'm looking for a handguard to put on this thing and hopefully get one here pretty soon. Okay, so this guy right here, this is the Proof Research. It's carbon fiber wrap barrels. These things are hand lapped. Very similar to a Criterion barrel. Might as well get that guy. Let's take a look at this. Now this is a hand lapped barrel. Uh, there's your lands right there, as you can see. I can't wait to put this to good use. These are great barrels. Uh, I have the one in eight on my DMR rifle and uh, it punches holes, period. We'll be uh, shooting a DMR match here at the Snipers Unknown. Uh, my teammate is, is your six covered Rick. And as soon as our uh, train wreck down there in Florida is over and done with, we'll be starting to train on that. We'll get into the DMR stuff where we'll be showing you guys a Kestrel using the uh, Leica Rangemaster2800.com, which ties into the Kestrel. All I got to do is laze the target, and it will give me my firing solution right there and on the Kestrel. But look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful barrel. Just run it around here real quickly, but look at those lands. But this is what you would expect. I think these barrels are close to $700, $800. And the, and the crazy thing is, is that the delta between an older barrel, look at the crown on that thing. The, the crazy thing is, is that between um, where barrels used to be and where they are now, 
Look at how beautifully cut that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Where they are now, it, there's the, the delta between a high expensive barrel and an economical barrel is the gap is closing. Uh, just because of technology, the drilling capacity. Uh, but there are some old machinery pieces of equipment out there that date back into World War II that are still being used. Uh, let me run and get the Criterion barrel because I really want you guys to see that one. Hold on. And it's, by, by the way, probably one of the more accurate barrels out there. And I always push Criterion as being if you want a good hand-lapped barrel, Criterion is not only is it economical as far as high-end barrels go, but they are damn accurate. Let me get this thing. Hold on. Okay, so this is one of my DMR uppers. This has an 18 inch Criterion hybrid. This is a one and eight twist, two, two, three wild chamber. I don't think I've ever cleaned this barrel. <laughs> and like I said, one of the things that I, I would tell you is that once you start seeing an accuracy fall, that's probably when you wanna start doing something in relationship to uh, decoppering and de, uh, getting the carbon out of there. So let's take a look at this thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this guy's probably due for a good cleaning. Look at that, that carbon buildup. But I will tell you this, this guy, uh, even I think one of the best rounds for this one is 55 grain. It, it loves 55 grain for some reason. Carbon build up on the early parts of it, but it starts coming down out here. But look how beautiful those lands are. Not bad at all. Look at that. Again, I, I, for the money, probably one of the best rifle barrels out there. Take a look at the crown. Nice. Here's the inside of a uh, Ultradyne. Look at those, those ports. Look at the sharp edge on that port right there. Is that not cool? I love this camera. Let's go ahead and take a look, see how nasty the uh, gas port looks like. I can find it. That's oh, a rifle link system. There you go. Yeah, because you can see there, it's got a lot of carbon. Probably would like to do a before and after. Would you guys, I, I think that'd be a good video. Let's take this thing out. Let's put some 77 grain through it, see how it shoots, and then do a pure cleaning. And usually when I clean it, get all the copper, all the carbon out, I like to put about 50 rounds through it just to build up the copper equilibrium in the barrel. And then we'll shoot some 77 grain and see how it turns out. But look at that thing, man. Look at those lands. That thing, this, this is a nice barrel. All right. Well, guys, uh, we got a whole plethora of stuff in there that we could do. But uh, right now, that's it. I just thought this would be a cool, fun video to do and show you guys the differences in the barrels, uh, Cold Hammer Forge. I mean, if you learned anything, let me know. <laughs> if not, well, I hope you enjoyed it. It's Coda Boy 32 As always, we always end them like this. God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform who are doing the right thing on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, screw the bad apples. We don't need you. 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. I'm talking about the guys who observe and enforce our Constitution and look out for the well-being of people. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all be good. I am out of here.